Hello, everyone. My name is Brooks Westbrook. I'm the Chief Architect uh, for Juniper Network's Cloud Provider segment. And with me today, I have Raghu Malia, our VP Fellow of Platform Development. Hi, Raghu. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Brooks. How are you? Doing well. The focus of the conversation today is going to be around uh, software disaggregation and uh, specifically what software disaggregation means to Juniper as a company and what software disaggregation means to you as a customer. Um, so jumping in, Raghu, uh, software disaggregation uh, in the industry today has become a, a bit of a buzzword, uh, similar to the word cloud. For Juniper, uh, could you start by defining what software aggregation means in the context of Junos as our operating system? Sure, Brooks. Uh, software disaggregation in the context of this discussion uh, refers to the components that make up a modern network operating system. Uh, typically, the components that make up a network operating system are the Linux kernel, the base, and the applications that run in user space, and the centralized data store that is API driven that allows these applications to communicate among each other. And that's the context of this discussion. And what would you say uh, Juniper's motivation has been for disaggregating our software? A few years ago, we embarked on the journey to modernize our operating system. And as part of that journey, we talked to a, a set of operators and the feedback that we received from these operators was that they were looking for improved availability, accelerated innovation, operational efficiency, and faster pace of innovation. Uh, in addition to that, we were also looking at modernizing our internal development ecosystem. We wanted to move to a modern CI CD based model to get better productivity. All of these actually led us to the path of going down software disaggregation in order to achieve these goals. And that's, that was the incentive for us to actually introduce software disaggregation into our network operating system. So the context of your answer to some degree is uh, focused on what software disaggregation does for us as Juniper. If I were to put myself in the shoes of a network operator who doesn't necessarily care about the components that make up the systems architecture of the host OS running on the router or switch. How would you answer uh, why they as an operator should care about this work? Network operators can derive significant benefits from software disaggregation. As an example, higher resiliency and increased robustness improve system availability. And one of the things that software disaggregation gets you is modularity. And modularity results in higher resiliency in the system. Uh, apart from that, having a modular ecosystem allows for accelerated execution, which means customers can actually see faster turnaround by providing imp incremental updates to them. At the same time, you also see higher operational efficiency due to the Linux-centric nature of the software disaggregated model. And then finally, faster pace of innovation allows network operators to see new features implemented in their network so they can actually get uh, to newer features that their customers can consume. So would it be fair to say that us having a more principled architecture of how we're building the systems moving forward, ultimately enable a network operator to get the things that they have been asking for from Juniper. That is absolutely true. For where we're at in this journey thus far, uh, because I recognize, and, and I think most people uh, recognize from an engineering background that um, larger efforts such as this take uh, multiple you know, at times small incrementations uh, to get to where you're trying to go. How long have we been working on this and where are we at in that journey thus far? Brooks, we started this journey more than five years ago. And since then we've made significant progress. We released our first product in early 2019. And since then we've released a few more. And in the course of the last couple of years, we've added new, new, new features as well as new use cases. And these cover a diverse set of domains, a core, peering, and data center. And we, very, we feel very happy about the progress that we've made so far. And we continue to invest in new use cases and features. At the same time, you know, we are working with customers to, to basically track the adoption 
of this aggregated software that we have uh, out there. It's called Genos Evolved. And we are you know, taking into consideration the feedback that we receive from our customers in order to make the product better. I, I think for me personally, one of the uh, most interesting areas that I've seen this work enable us to do things that we weren't able to do before um, is specifically around the, the disaggregation of our routing protocol daemon or RPD. Um, one of the things that has been generally interesting to me about that is um, once we had that clean abstraction from the rest of the operating system, um, we found multiple use cases that we may not have seen up front um, for RPD outside of Junos. And so my question for you is, what are some of those use cases that you have observed from uh, disaggregating that application from the rest of the system? One of the byproducts of software disaggregation has been uh, the ability to take some of the business logic from the software and provide it as an independent software. Uh, and one of the applications here is the routing protocol daemon, RPD. Uh, we call it in Junos parlance. What we've been able to do with RPD is we've been able to take the application uh, out of the Junos ecosystem and provide it as a container that can run either in a native Linux environment as well as it's capable of running inside of the Junos environment. And that provides a multitude of opportunities for our customers to be able to take this piece of software and use it in their own environments, be it cloud native or be it in a Linux ecosystem. Thank you for that. Many vendors today uh, claim some level of software disaggregation. In our implementation and in our strategy, how would you say that Juniper is unique uh, in the marketplace? Our implementation is certainly based on industry accepted uh, design principles, but there are a couple of things that are uh, unique in our systems that actually set us apart from our competition. And one of, the, one of them is the support for scale up systems where we are able to build large scale up systems using the concept of clustering that is inbuilt into our software infrastructure. And in addition to that, we also actually see uh, the second benefit of having our applications, which have been battle hardened for the last 20 years and are feature rich, uh, being able to uh, take those applications and run them in the new infrastructure as is. And that, that's a significant benefit because it brings the maturity of the software that our, that our customers are accustomed to uh, with, with Junos uh, routing and such other functions. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that speaks to your previous answer around CRPD. For where, you know, we're, we're at this point in time in, in our journey that we've been describing thus far. And, and ultimately, we have further increments of where we're trying to go. Moving forward, how do you feel uh, that our plan and our strategy uh, will ultimately drive value to our cloud provider customer base. In the long term, the rich programmability and telemetry that the system provides, uh, in addition to the modularity, allows our customers to onboard future applications in a much more simpler manner. I think that's going to be a big differentiator going forward in how our customers uh, plan to use uh, you know, our, our Junos Evolved ecosystem. Uh, furthermore, uh, the ability to take some of the applications that we've decoupled from the software infrastructure, like Rowdy, uh, as CRP is an example, and use them in new ways, uh, which, we've, which we don't know about today, is an additional advantage that we see uh, our cloud customers being able to uh, take advantage of. Uh, and at the same time, you know, we, uh, we would like to work with our cloud customers and see how their designs and, uh, you know, deployments evolve and, you know, see how we can take those new deployments and, you know, incorporate them into the applications that we provide them. And for, for our viewers out there, um, one of the things that I think is important that we acknowledge here is that as we reach a point where we are disaggregating more applications and more components in our system, um, all of the ways in which those components could be used are not always readily apparent to us. So my request to you would be, if you see a use case out there um, for a specific application in our system that may or may not be associated to Junos, 
um, let us know. Uh, that That is something that we would really appreciate the feedback on. And Raghu, I just want to say uh, thank you for the time with this conversation, and I hope it was informative to anyone watching out there. Thank you, Brooks, for having me here.